Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're watching Earth being bombarded by asteroids. In one of the previous videos we've discussed what would actually happen if all of the asteroids from the asteroid belt fell onto the surface of our planet. But today I wanted to go into a little bit more science and find out if we can actually use asteroids to move planets in our solar system, specifically Mars. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So, in other words, the question is, can we actually use all of the asteroids in the asteroid belt to uh, nudge a planet from its orbit? Could we combine uh, all of the asteroids or alternatively launch them individually and move the planetary orbit so that it basically is in a different position in space? So right now we've collided about 20 asteroids, but did it actually influence our orbit? Well, moving Earth is actually not really recommended, and also why would we would want to do this? Because Earth already has really interesting, very uh, optimal conditions for life. But Mars is not a planet where we can actually survive very easily. Now, could we somehow move the orbit closer to Earth, or closer to the Sun, that is, so that it becomes uh, easier to terraform? So let's imagine that we find a way to somehow um, collide hundreds, thousands, millions, and billions of asteroids with Mars. And let's see what happens um, if we launch them in such a way that it basically influences the orbit and moves it closer to the Sun. Now, what do we have to do for this? Well, we have to, first of all, um, calculate the total mass of asteroids. We've done this in a previous video. And you may remember that the total mass of all of the asteroids in our solar system is equivalent to approximately three times the mass of Ceres, which is right here, which is also the biggest object in the asteroid belt. So if you take this and multiply it by three, you'll get the approximate mass of all of the um, asteroids altogether. So you don't have to actually uh, do them individually. Okay, what else do we have to know? Well, we also have to kind of know the current orbit of Mars, just so that we can actually then uh, compare it to the new orbit. Now, we are currently aiming to move the Martian orbit, which is in orange, to be a little bit more aligned with blue, which is Earth. To decrease its orbit, if you um, if you played the Kerbal Space Program, or if you watched the uh, videos I made on Kerbal Space Program, you know that you basically have to push Mars this way. So it's currently orbiting in this direction. So it's going counterclockwise, but we have to move it clockwise or push it clockwise for it to uh, drop its orbit closer to Earth. Now this push has to be quite dramatic. There's actually uh, quite a lot of um, articles written about, like for example, how many nuclear bombs you would need to dislodge a planet from its orbit. We'll talk about this in one of the future videos. But uh, basically what we want to do is we want to dislodge Mars um, from its current location closer to Earth. Now, Mars, as you can see, has a slightly elliptical orbit. So it's a little bit closer to Earth here. It's a little bit farther away from Earth here. So in order for us to move it closer to Earth, we actually need to launch all of the asteroids that we're planning to launch in its apoapsis, which is approximately here. So let's do that. Let's actually stop Mars, um, or not stop Mars, but stop the simulation right when the Mars gets here. And then we're going to launch the hypothetical asteroid belt at Mars. So in other words, this is our way of trying to terraform Mars the more destructive way. So here we're going to stop or slow down the simulation. And uh, what I'm going to do now is first look at the Martian orbit as it currently stands. And we need to try to remember these numbers because we're trying to compare them to the future numbers. So semi-major axis, which is the average distance of Mars to the Sun, is about 1.52 AU. Or if you want to look at it in kilometers, it's also, um, I guess... 227 million-ish kilometers. 
and um, its periapsis and apoapsis are 138 and 166. So this is our current values. Uh, also, eccentricity is about 9.3%. 9, 9 so we need to remember or try to remember most of these values. So now let's zoom into Mars and basically launch those asteroids at it. Now remember, we're launching them this way. So we're going, actually going to position ourselves just like that. And now uh, try to launch the asteroids right at this point right here. And I'm only going to be uh, launching one object, uh, an object that's going to be about three times the mass of Ceres. Now, obviously, the speed of launch also matters. And we're going to imagine that these are actual asteroids um, basically colliding with Mars. So the speed here would be approximately maybe 30 kilometers per second. Now, this is a bit extreme. Um, a lot of the asteroids actually fall at much lower speeds, but we're going to give Mars a chance here to, to be moved as much as we can to Earth. So let's uh, basically collide it with uh, this object at approximately um, 30 kilometers per second, and it's going to be um, colliding with a point right here. And this is kind of what this object looks like. So in comparison to Mars, it's uh, significantly smaller, but basically this is all of the asteroids as a single object. Now, um, it's currently moving at about 30 kilometers per second toward Mars. And we're actually going to um, look at Martian uh, orbital parameters right now, just to see how much they actually change when the collision does occur. So we might want to accelerate time here a little bit just so that it actually moves a little bit faster toward Mars. And the collision that you're about to see is going to be pretty explosive. So here we go. This is going to be a pretty violent event that will most likely heat up the planet quite dramatically. Three, two, one, and there we go. Now, you may have noticed how the numbers kind of changed quite a lot, actually. Um, and this is essentially what we were able to generate here. Let's just take a look at what we've actually created first. This is uh, the beautiful explosion that would occur if all of the asteroids as a single piece collide with Mars. Now, it's more likely that we would be, if we were to actually do this one day, not that we have any technology to do it just yet, would most likely redirect asteroids one by one or at least uh, the larger asteroids. There's about, um, we think there's about 1.5 million asteroids uh, that are about one kilometer or larger in size in the asteroid belt. So there should be quite a lot of collisions, over 1.5 million collisions as a matter of fact. Now notice how a lot of the material actually kind of uh, dissipated into outer space. So it actually didn't really add that much mass to Mars but it did ch change its orbital parameters. If I were to first zoom out of here and take a look at the Martian orbit as it currently stands, we would realize that, that it didn't really come to the Earth orbit at all. But, but how much did it actually change? So let's take a look at the numbers and compare them to the previous values that we had. Starting with the semi-major axes. Now remember, this value originally was about 227 million kilometers. And that value has dropped by something like 10 million kilometers. The periapsis, uh, which is the closest approach, uh, changed by about 0.1 um, or I guess 0.12 AU. And the apoapsis, uh, well, it didn't really change at all actually because we were launching the objects at the apoapsis. So in order for us to change this, we need to launch more asteroids when it actually gets to its periapsis. The eccentricity here increased from about 9% to about 14%, so by 5%. And so this implies that, yes, we did change the orbit, but not enough for us to terraform Mars. As a matter of fact, uh, just based on what we have here, you would probably need at least two more collisions uh, at this location, similar collisions, to bring the periapsis down, possibly even three collisions. And then I guess like seven more collisions at the periapsis to um, then move Mars closer to Earth. In other words, you need at least 10 times more mass of the asteroid belt to relocate Mars to the position of Earth. Let me demonstrate. So let's take um, another series, but this time we're actually going to give it about um, 10 times more mass than it had before. So in other words, this is like three asteroid belts in one. 
Uh, we now are going to just watch for the series to collide with Mars. And what we're looking at here is the periapsis distance. So we want this to be as close to one as possible. So at this location, uh, it might actually drop to one. Will it? Okay, yes, it actually dropped even lower than one. So now it's even closer to the sun than Earth. So we didn't really have to have this many um, series. Now let's wait for Mars to get to the other location in its orbit, which is basically right here somewhere, where we need to take a look at the orbit. And now what we're going to do is uh, have more collisions at this location right here. Now, like I said, it, it was it's going to be about seven times the mass of the asteroid belt. We're going to go with a value about six just to see what happens. And so this obviously uh, creates a relatively unrealistic situation where we need about 10 times the mass of the entire asteroid belt for, um, for Mars, to, Mars to actually have similar orbit to Earth. So let's see what happens here. And here's that collision. This was about seven or actually six times the mass of the asteroid belt. Very, very extreme sort of conditions uh, generated on Mars. And its orbit is now... Okay, still quite uh, quite high. It means that you actually need even more um, collisions to generate this uh, apoapsis of about 1 AU. And following a few more collisions, um, that would basically take us to about, I guess, 12 masses of the asteroid belt. Um, not only did my Mars basically turn into this fiery hot bowl of magma that also is radiating a lot of mass out uh, by basically just um, gassing out. It's literally uh, dissolving and gassing out as we speak. But we also were able to generate the orbit that I was kind of looking for, with Mars being just a little bit closer to the Sun than Earth, uh, meaning that technically you could now generate a terrestrial Mars. So it's um, just between Earth and Venus, so it means that it receives a little bit more sunlight, but also because it's smaller in size, you would need that. And lastly, um, it actually has, or at least it had a lot of water on the surface, which has now evaporated because I made Mars just a little bit too hot. Also, what I just realized is that it lost a lot of its mass because of those collisions and because of the evaporation. It's now about, I guess, half the mass that it used to be. So in that sense, this was not a very successful experiment, but at least now we know how much mass approximately we would need to dislodge Mars from its current orbit toward Earth. Well, the answer is a lot more mass than we currently have in the asteroid belt, so for this reason, we definitely will not be able to do it this way. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do in this video. Thank you for watching, space out, and as always, bye-bye.